Okay, let us continue. So we have a system of equations uh, uh, with n plus m variables and n plus m equations where we are only interested in finding the first n variables. So we are not interested in finding x2, we only want to find x1. Okay, and this is the system of equations we get, right? Now if we expand this out, you will actually get, you know, uh, essentially two equations or two systems of equations, so to speak, bx2 equal to b1 and cx1 plus dx2 equal to b2 okay so these are the two equations we get and what we want to do now is we want to eliminate x2 okay from these equations we want to get rid of x2 and only try to write an equation in uh, in x1 right now this is a very standard uh, trick that we'll use uh, we can just assume these a b c d are like scalars and then we'll do what we do right so suppose if a b c d were scalars what would you have done uh, well, we would have taken the value of x2 from, let's say, the second equation and substituted it in the first equation, right? That would give you an equation only in x1, so it would eliminate x2 effectively. So that's what we'll try to do, okay? So to be very precise, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to find out the value of x2 from the second equation, okay? So how do you, how do, you do that? Well, uh, one natural way to do it is to simply take the second equation multiply it with d inverse okay we multiply the second equation with d inverse i'll get d inverse c x1 plus x2 equal to d inverse b2 okay multiply the second equation with d inverse and this gives you x2 which you can substitute into the first equation right so that's what we'll do now i could not have done the reverse right so i want to highlight here that i could not actually find out the value of v2 from the first equation and substitute it in second. Somebody will tell me why I can't do that. For example, I can't multiply with b inverse, right? Because b is not a square matrix here. b is actually n cross n. It could be fat or skinny depending on what LMM are, right? So this is actually the way to go, right? I would actually have to take d, multiply the second equation with d inverse. So this is a step, right? Multiply equation 2 with d inverse. Then multiply with b and subtract from first equation okay so if i multiply the second equation with d inverse this is what i would get if i multiply then with b i would get b d inverse c x1 plus d x2 equal to b d inverse b2 then I can subtract this equation, subtract this equation from the very first equation here. As you can see, you have common bx2, bx2, they will just cancel. Okay. This is basically the same thing as finding x2 from this equation and substituting it in the first equation. Okay. Now, if I do that, what do I get? I get a minus bd inverse c x1 is equal to b1 minus bd inverse b2. So as you can see, what we have here is a new set of equations, right? So this here is going to be an n cross n matrix. So you have a new system of n equations and n unknowns. This x1 is an n cross 1 vector. So there are n unknowns. A new system in n equations and n unknowns. Then uh, uh, that, that can be solved to find x1. Okay. And well, you see the should complement coming here very, very naturally. Look at this matrix over here. This matrix is precisely the should complement of A. Okay. So by eliminating one set of variables, uh, by eliminating the should complement of D, sorry, uh, the should complement of D. So by eliminating one set of variables, what you obtain is a new system of equations that has should complement as the uh, system representing the uh, as the matrix representing the system of equations okay fantastic now uh, we can actually write this in a slightly more interesting way right so remember what we are doing here is we are starting with this matrix over here and we are essentially doing some operations so it's not what we are doing is we are multiplying the second equation that means this row essentially with d inverse Okay, and then we are multiplying it with b and then we are subtracting from the first equation correct so in some sense we are doing row operations on this matrix correct so you can actually write it 
as a matrix multiplication right so you can actually write it like this right so you can write a b c d okay this system of equations over here this rows represent the equations right and the columns represent the let me just turn on my volume here right and the columns represent the uh, variables okay so this column over here represents a variable x1 this is x1 this represents x2 this row over here represents equation 1 this row represents equation 2 correct so what you are doing here is you are multiplying equation 2 with bd inverse right with minus bd inverse in fact right you are multiplying this equation with d inverse first then with b and then you are subtracting from the first equation so it's minus correct so basically what we are doing here is we are multiplying the second equation with minus b d inverse okay and we are adding it to the first equation so we are just multiplying it with an identity matrix so i'll write i n to mean an n cross n identity okay so what are we doing here so when you if you actually multiply this right what do you see so you will actually get if you multiply this you will see i n here multiplying a right minus b d inverse c right so you'll actually get a minus b d inverse c here Okay. and then if you multiply this with the second column so i n with b that is just b and minus b d inverse with d that's actually going to give you zero okay that's what you get okay and uh, uh, what, the second set of so basically what i'm doing here is i'm actually rewriting the first equation here so what i've written down here right now is this first equation So, uh, uh, so, 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 so let so let me just write down the second equation as it is. So, cx1 plus dx2 is equal to b2. Okay. Second equation, there is no change, right? So that means basically I am not going to change anything. The second equation will actually be the same as what it is, and then that's just going to give me c d here. Okay. So you can check that this works out. Right. So what I have done here is I started with the system of equations. So if you want to be very clear, you can actually put in x1, x2 also here. Okay. Okay. So what I have done here is I have started with this system of equations and I have done some row operations that are represented by this pre-multiplication. Okay. These represent the row operations that I am carrying out on the system. And what I get here on the right hand side is this system, this new system. Okay. So what effectively has happened here, right? So what we what we can you can actually check that this whole multiplication thing works out, right? That's basically what we did. You can check, you already checked by multiplying, you know, this with both these columns that you actually get a minus b d inverse 1 times x1. So this justifies it. You can also similarly check this row, right? So 0 times a plus i m times c that just gives you c and 0 times b plus i m times d that just gives you d. I m here is m cross m identity, right? So you're left with c d. Okay, so you just multiply and see that it's actually going to give you the same thing, right? So basically, you can write like this. You can say i n minus b d inverse zero i m times a b c d is equal to the shift complement of b. It's m by d zero c d. Okay, this is what uh, this is what you will get. So this is often very very useful in you know uh, understanding the properties of the Schur complement, right? Uh, so Schur complements are essentially what you get when you try to diagonalize, when you try to in some sense triangularize a block matrix. So see what you are trying trying to do here. You have a block matrix, and I'm trying to make it triangular, right? So this is like a triangular block matrix that I discussed at the beginning of this lecture. Right? So, in the process of trying to make this matrix triangular, you end up with a Schur complement. Okay, so that's so. Whenever you try to triangularize a block matrix, or you try to eliminate some variables, or you try to minimize only over partially over some variables, that's when you can expect to see Schur complements arise. Okay. By the way, let's actually take this a step further. Here we have actually triangularized it, but you can also very easily diagonalize it. Okay. So to diagonalize it, what we have to understand here 
is let's go back to the system of equations that we have had here right we had a minus bd inverse c times x1 is equal to is equal to b1 minus this one right b1 minus bd inverse b2 let me actually write it uh, combinedly as i minus bd inverse times uh, write it a bit more carefully like this i minus bd inverse b1 b2 okay let me try to write it like this i minus bd inverse you can see that you know if you compute this whole thing you will actually get same as this quantity over here right b1 minus bd inverse okay so now, uh, and, and then I have a second equation, right? So that is Cx1 plus Dx2 is equal to, uh, let me recall what I had here, B2, right? Okay, now to uh, essentially make this matrix uh, diagonal, what I need to do is also get rid of X1 in the second equation, right? Make sure the second equation is also roughly in terms of X2, you know, or the uh, second variable so to speak okay? for this what you can do is you can actually make a very simple sort of a change in variable okay so let's consider the change of variables let's consider y1 to be x1 okay let's define y1 to be the same as x1 and then let us define uh, such that we have minus d inverse c uh, y1 plus y2 as x2 okay we'll see in a minute why i'm doing this right so like y1 equal to x1 and i'm going to call this to be my uh, y2. so now what happens to this equation over here in terms of y1 and y2 so the first equation since x1 is the same as y1 will simply go unchanged right this x1 will be replaced with y1 that's it that's all you'll be done with, right? X1 will be replaced with y1 and you'll get your equation. Let's see what happens to this equation, right? So in this equation, as you can see, uh, let's try to plug in x1 will be the same as y1. So you'll get c y1, right? Plus uh, x2. Well, what is x2? Let's write down what x2 is. x2 here, by this definition, now you can see why I made that particular choice. Minus d inverse c y1 plus y2. That's what x2 is, right? equal to b2 this is what happens to the second equation right now when we expand this right so when you multiply this d d inverse you'll just get identity so it's just minus c y1 which will cancel with the c y1 here so these two terms will cancel and what you'll be left with is simply d y2 equal to b2 which is what you wanted remember i want the second equation only to have the second variable i don't want you to have the first variable at all okay so what have we done here we have in some sense uh, done the following so let's uh, write down the system of equations that we have here so a minus b d inverse c 0 c d okay we had times x1 x2 here okay is equal to something this is what we had there correct but now i am replacing this x1 and x2 with this particular product over here okay so this can be written as x1 x2 be written as i n 0 times minus d inverse c times i n okay y1 y2 you can just see by multiplying here right so i n times y plus 0 times y2 that's just y1 that will be equal to x1 okay similarly minus d inverse y1 plus y2 will be equal to x2 which is what these equations are over here Okay, so I've just written these equations in matrix form. Okay, and this actually gives you a diagonal matrix, right? So, combining what we had from before, now remember this itself is a triangularized version. So, this itself is a product of these two matrices. So, let's actually put everything together. You have IN, right? Minus BD inverse is what you had earlier, 0 IM times ABCD times i n minus d inverse c 0 i n okay this product is going to be equal to m by d 
0 0 okay f by d remember is simply a minus uh, a minus b d inverse c correct a minus b d inverse okay uh, without understanding any of these uh, variable changes and you know uh, row operations that we did you can very easily verify this just by doing the multiplication okay i'll just leave that as an exercise just do matrix multiplication right just multiply these three block matrices together right multiply these two then multiply the product with this and you will actually get this okay so this is a very important tool in understanding sure complements right so what is happening over here is that when you have a block matrix over here that you are trying to make diagonal that you are trying to diagonalize what you end up with is a matrix that involves sure complements okay so here we have d over here d over here and the sure complement of d okay uh, so that's the fundamental idea behind the sure complement so we'll continue in the next part